student fellow comrades who uh, died innocently in Tiananmen Square in Beijing, China. Close to 200 students gathered on the Iowa State campus to ask for moral support of the people of Iowa. Iowa State President Gordon Eaton spoke on behalf of the university. Uh, we express to you our grief, uh, our bewilderment, and indeed uh, our anger. Uh, I think our anger comes from the fact uh, that the world has for a very long time known that problems of this kind are not solved in this way. They perhaps are put off uh, for a while by desperate people. The students are hoping that public pressure will force the American government to take some type of action against Chinese rulers. To uh, stop the military cooperation, the military aid to China, to stop the high tech transfer of high tech to China, and I think impose economic sanction. Um, I think those are very important issues. But while violence happened in the streets of Beijing, a delegation of Iowa State University officials is in the city to help educate residents of that country learn how to do business with the state of Iowa. Dr. John Wong told us by phone that his delegation is in no danger. I was up at the other square on, uh, on about uh, 4.30 uh, Saturday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, the closest that I could get to the square was about five kilometers away. And there must be at least, uh, by some estimates, uh, over a uh, million people out there. Wong says he and his delegation have been treated well by the marketing officials there in Beijing, and they have been apologetic for all the disturbance going on during their visit. Wong says if all goes as plans, he still should leave the country by Wednesday. Roger Riley, 5 TV News. Eventually, the troops were forced to turn around and leave the vicinity of Tiananmen Square. Late today, government television broadcasts issued public warnings that the Chinese military would no longer exercise restraint in dealing with the students, but would use force if necessary to carry out the martial law decree. Even the defense minister, formerly considered a moderate, was shown encouraging the troops. Talented soldiers began appearing in the street in large numbers, and they began clashing with students once again, firing tear gas at them in the vicinity of the Communist Party headquarters and beating many who refused to disperse. Then tonight, the full-scale assault against the pro-democracy movement, which is continuing to unfold with mounting casualties. Gary Shepard, ABC News, Beijing. Later in this broadcast, we'll talk live with Winston Lord, the former U.S. ambassador to China, but first, when we return the political power struggle that set off today's bloody clashes in Beijing and how the Bush administration is responding. World News, Saturday, brought to you by... Just kept up leaflets in solidarity with the Beijing protesters, and about 100 gathered at the Chinese consulate in Los Angeles to appeal for an end to the bloodshed. In our Washington Notebook tonight, uh, we're going to talk about the developments in Beijing. And to help us understand, we're joined now from our Washington studio by Harry Harding of the Brookings Institution. Uh, Dr. Harding, an expert on the new China. Dr. Harding, uh, why this sudden change in mood by the Chinese leadership? Well, that's a good question. I think probably there are two. They tried stalling and delaying. They tried uh, the uh, use of unarmed police and soldiers. None of that cleared the square, and the leadership has now decided to resort to the use of deadly force. I think secondly, and perhaps even more important, that decision may also reflect the fact that the struggle for power within the Chinese Communist leadership may now be over, the hardliners may have prevailed, and those who all along have been urging restraint, nonviolence, and dialogue within the Chinese leadership may now have been curbed. Well, the demonstration has been taken care of, apparently, but has the protest movement itself, well, what, what impact on it do you suppose? I doubt it. I think that what we're probably going to see is continued sporadic protest, possibly violent protest, continued disruption of the Chinese economy through strikes and sit-ins and slowdowns. In other words, we may see an hour extraordinarily deep. The Chinese leadership was using very strong language to describe the protesters today, describing them as, uh, as worse than common criminals and so on. Uh, we had we saw very harsh actions today. Will we see the rhetoric does concern me? This is really a hark back to the 1970s, the latter years of the Maoist period. And it's also tragic because what the protesters originally were asking for was simply that the Chinese Communist Party 
undertake the political reforms that would have promised to its own people. China and other places over the President Bush and Secretary of State Baker joined in denouncing the actions of the Chinese government against the demonstrators. With the first of two reports, here's Ann Compton in Maine, where President Bush is spending the weekend. From the said, I deeply... But China watchers, scholars like Dr. Amos Jordan say there is really not much the U.S. can do. There's no point in our uh, taking a high political profile on this because uh, we really don't have any record. They're spectators. They're essentially spectators. It has to be remembered that all of this has been happening on a Saturday afternoon when many in official Washington are out of town. But it is certain... State Richard Holbrook has rejoined us now. What kind of situation does the China situation put the United States in? It's a tremendous dilemma, Maria, because the original U.S.-China opening was strategic in nature. We still benefit from that. If the relationship now collapses, and it's certainly going to get weaker, it will benefit the Soviet Union most of all. On the other hand, we cannot pretend that these events leave the run on your, on your show. Some extraordinarily tough proposals by a right-wing senator and a liberal Democrat are in the House. I don't know where we come out on this yet, but the crisis that we have in terms of what we do next is... Just a moment. formulated to stop moisture... Check, 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 check. check. Shock, surprise. What, what did you think today when you heard this on the news? Well, I think I, I was very shocked. I think uh, when I was watching the news, I start getting tears. And I thought lots of people did. And it was uh, because in China, so many years, we haven't had a major bloodshed like this. Well, the last time was in 1976. And uh, you know, at that time, was people didn't really quite understand uh, the situation. And they were thought that uh, we still have a hope with the new leadership. And then, you know, later on, but this time is different. This time was. The government is actually using the force, using the machine guns, tanks, heavy, uh, you know, artillerists to 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 against the people, to shoot the people. This is a, a I think is this a, a, I would call this government a fascist government. Mm -hmm. So, what what's going to happen here? Is, is democracy will democracy die? Or no, I don't think so. I think that democracy will always live. It will live forever. I think this time is the first time that the democratic ideas now uh, has rooted in people deeply. And I think it will be there. Uh, and I don't think people will give up. And I think in the short term, the, as the, the, ch the official gov uh, government newspaper says, that they have had a great victory. And I think that maybe they did in the, in the, at the present time, but they will never have a great victory. And I think people will, will prevail in the future. Uh, I guess, what about uh, your, your families that are back there? Oh, I have tried to contact my aunt in Beijing, and uh, she told me that uh, uh, earlier that uh, her sons and daughters has tried to go to Tiananmen Square and help the students with food and drinks. Uh, but uh, I have great difficulties get hold of, uh, you know, contact them uh, through phone. Uh, it just cannot, you can't just get through there mm -hmm. at all. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gurk, you say like a T A N G ten. Okay. Yeah. Deming, D E M I N G. Great. Um, Gail talked to you earlier. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think also, I know. Okay. okay, first of all, give me your name again. Sir. Wu Xiaolin. Last name is Wu, W U. And uh, first, first name spelled as X. I A O L I N Wu Xiaolin. Okay. Yeah. All right. You are the president of the uh, local Chinese student association. Yes. Chinese student scholar of French association. Yes. That is another Chinese student Okay. Uh, okay. First of all, you were able to get through to your family. Your family lives where? Uh, my family uh, is in um, Beijing, and uh, I called um, my parents. Uh, local time this afternoon at three o'clock, and uh, it's pretty easy to get it through. And uh, I ask if uh, uh, you know my family members are okay. They say they are all okay. And uh, I ask uh, what their uh, you know their 
what do they think about the things happened last night? They, they said they're all shocked. And, uh, uh, and also they say the people in Beijing know, you know, the, who is right, who is wrong. Mm -hmm. And not like the government propaganda says, uh, you know, the, the people in Tiananmen Square is a counter-revolutionary. Actually, the government itself this time is counter-revolutionary. They are against the people, against the will of the people against uh, uh, the future of the China. Okay. So do they feel like there's going to be more bloodshed over there even after this day is over and this, this incident's over? Uh, I, I, they actually, they really don't know what will happen, but we will think uh, the, the, the army will control all parts of Beijing. And uh, as for the charities, uh, my parents uh, since our, you know, my uh, our home, uh, the buildings overlook uh, a road to a hospital. They themselves see six bodies. Really? Yes. Has the road been congested with traffic going to the hospital? I hear the hospitals are overrun with people. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, were they concerned at any time for their safety with all the shooting going on? How far are they from the square? Uh, it's about uh, four miles. So it's they're, about not, from they're far enough away that they're probably fairly safe? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think the shooting actually started somewhere near my, my, my family, somewhere near there. Because I watched the news, this is west of Tiananmen Square, about four miles. That's about where my family is. So uh, your family, are they concerned about the future of living there under the government the way it's turning now? Uh, I will think the people temporarily probably will, you know, um, just uh, some will go out, some will stay home. But uh, for the long run, uh, the people won't stay silent. They will do something. And uh, I don't think the government will succeed in the long term. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Nope. Should I get your name spelled properly? Oh, KNG and DNG. Uh, from, from central China. Um, I guess the uh, first thing I want to ask you is, uh, is there anything that the American government can do or, or anybody in the world community to, to answer to this uh, that had happened today? Of course. We think, I mean, every people will be sh surprised by what, what was happening in China, and we think and we hope um, the people around the world will uh, make a strong response to what they did against our people, and uh, we deeply hope the, I mean, the U.S. government to make some, some, I mean, strong response to to the crime that our government did against our people. And uh, I think, I mean, no matter what result it could be, but I think it will help our people. I think, I mean, finally, you know, the democracy will prevail against the, the dictatorship. So, you know, we, and also we want to try every means to help our people too. I mean, protest to protest against our government. I sense here that, that everyone in this room feels really just outraged, just yeah. angry. Is that right? Right. Everyone, I mean, is very, very angry. Actually, you know, when we heard the news this morning, and then we get the, together to discuss and to watch what is going on in our country. You know, we are we are from our country. Although we are far from our country right now, but you know we are—I mean, I mean—keep we are keeping a close eye to what it, what the situation right now is in our country, and we were shocked by the situation right now in our country. You know, since so many people were shot by the government, by the military, military, and they just use weapon to against the people without any weapon, you know. So I think, I mean, everyone in the world will know which one, which is right and which is, I mean, actually counter the, 
people count the actually the democracy and who will take the responsibility for this crime and we really want to strong I mean strongly condemn the crime they did against our people so what would you do all of you eventually will, will return there uh, what will it be like when you go back you know if I go back of course I will join the movement of the students or right now actually it should be the movement of the people against the, the dictatorship of the government so you know since I was I mean getting through in counter uh, in cultural revolution and I saw what was happening over there and I believe I mean over that time uh, at that time the the people just sometimes just fight against each other but right now they are killed by the government use web using weapon and every means to suppress the people so I think I mean and we hope I mean every country in the world should protest the crime made by our government Yeah, I think that's going to do it. Uh, yeah. I think that'll get it. Uh, there you go. Um. This barn is something for the... What I did last night, basically, uh, what uh, what are we doing here today as far as getting the message out to Iowa? Well, um, it's, it is, you know, all the people are outraged by what has happened in China. And we are very sad that with so many lives being lost in China. And we, first we want to uh, pay uh, tributes to those who have died for democracy. And uh, also we want to show our... Uh, Strong, we, st we want to strongly protest the, the, the government's action, the brutality of the government, uh, which is using the machine guns and tanks and, and just shoot randomly uh, other people. And uh, so far, uh, I have learned that the uh, unconfirmed news has 2,600 people has killed in China. And, and also, there are military personnel and unplug the life support in the hospital of those who wounded. And I, I think, I just don't think, you know, anybody who has a consciousness of, of democracy or have any just for the humanitarian purposes I can stand this kind of uh, uh, barbaric action in China so basically you 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 said you told me last night you'd like to see uh, uh, real sanction economic sanctions I do wish to see uh, real economic sanctions I think there's everything that we could do uh, I think first we could ask the um, the uh, human rights committee in the US government to uh, investigate the what has happened in China we can also bring this up to UN, ask the UN to uh, also the um, some other um, uh, you know those uh, human rights associations to investigate this what happened in China we can also ask the US Congress and the Senate to uh, address this this issue in the in the floor and to uh, stop the military cooperation the military aid to China to stop the high tech transfer of high tech to China and I think impose economic sanction um, I think those are very important issues uh, there was also one thing that I think uh, even uh, some of the American Senate has, has thought about it. I didn't. Uh, that was uh, ask the uh, the unlimited ex extension of stay for the students who remain in the United States. And I do. I also want to tell those people uh, that, uh, that during the gather gathering, students from China. I, you know, we all going to fight for democracy. We are all going to unite together, fight for this cause, for our causes. Very good. Very good. Now it's, it's Deming, right? Deming. Yeah, Deming Tan. T A N G. T A N G. T A N G. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, well.
Again, I just wanted to, to ask you now. First of all, you are president of the. Tell me the association again. Uh, Chinese uh, Student and Scholar Friendship Association. Okay. Now, uh, I guess basically uh, you today here. You what is the real purpose of getting this together today? Uh, our purpose is uh, show uh, show our feelings to uh, to the people, to the media, and uh, uh, our sadness, our uh, our. Uh, strongly against the action by the government and uh, uh, we just feel we have to show our feelings and we uh, we want people in the world to know people in the Iowa to know uh, our feelings and we want people to uh, to show their support too have you feel do you feel that the, the, the people here on campus and in the state of Iowa have uh, lent you a sympathetic ear yes I, I feel that uh, we, we have several friends called when they call they already have the tears in their eyes, we, I can tell from the voice, and we have several people uh, take the newspaper here and, uh, you know, to show uh, the, 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 what happened in, the, uh, uh, in, the, in China. Uh, by the way, uh, President Eden just came. President. Let, me, let me just ask you, what, uh, sure. what, we can kind of get you around this way, right. what, what's, the, what's the situation as far as uh, Iowa State's concerned with the goings on in China this week? Well, as you know, we have a number of students from China, and these students are very much our students just as students from Iowa are, and I've come over here this afternoon to share my expression of grief and condolences uh, with them. Uh, many of them probably have uh, lost uh, friends, uh, perhaps even members of their family. I think they don't know at this point in time, but uh, certainly their expression of uh, bewilderment and outrage is something that's uh, readily understood by us all, I think. Now, what is the, uh, I was going to ask you, what's the implication for Iowa State University? You think that uh, by having uh, uh, upheaval like this could really affect the long-term relations for not only this, this university, but the countries, two countries? Well, there's, there, there is that possibility. We've been reaching out, and they've been reaching out toward us. Increasingly, we've had uh, growing numbers of visitors from there. Uh, we've been looking at faculty uh, exchanges and student exchanges, and all of that, it seems to me, is up in the air at this point. Mm -hmm. So what about the, the you have a, the delegation that's over there. They're in no way, in, in not in any danger, but basically what are they trying to do over there? Well, uh, one of them, uh, a group of them is over there as a trade delegation, and we've been trying to improve direct trade between Iowa for Iowa commodities and products uh, with the Chinese government, and it's very hard to understand what's going to come of that. I think it's a little too early, really, to begin to uh, imagine whether, whether that will be impacted, and if it is, how it will be impacted. That's all I need to ask you, sir. Okay. Thank
the people of Iowa to show uh, the people of the world our feeling, our angriness. And uh, uh, first, uh, we have uh, American friends and media to cover it. this. We thank them uh, to uh, have uh, this uh, demonstration known to the people of Iowa. And our schedule today is first, we, uh, we uh, stand still and uh, remain silent for a minute to uh, uh, to show our our uh, sadness to about people die, and secondly, uh, the president of Iowa State University, uh, Dr. Eden, will say a few words to us, and then uh, the representative of students' uh, version speech, and the coming town with uh, English version speech, and uh, and uh, then uh, to uh, show our uh, fellow students uh, our sadness. Thank you. I come to you in grief and sadness this afternoon to express to you who are members of the Iowa State University family, but who have come to us from the nation of the People's Republic of China, uh, our grief and our condolences. Uh, you, as much as any student at this university, who may have uh, been born and brought up here in the state of Iowa, are a part of our family. And when a tragedy like this befalls people whom you know, perhaps to whom you are related, it's a tragedy for the institution. And so on behalf of your other fellow students, those from Iowa, those from other states across this country, those from the other 120 lands that are represented uh, by members of the student body at this university, uh, we express to you our grief, uh, our bewilderment, and indeed uh, our anger. Uh, I think our anger comes from the fact uh, that the world has for a very long time known that problems of this kind are not solved in this way. They perhaps are put off uh, for a while by desperate people uh, who, who cannot see. In a revolution that follows, freedom follows, democracy follows, not in this country. There are so many other... Stand up.